Welcome to Biomed Buddy. Today we're going to try to give you an overview of incubators in general. We are going to be using the Forma Scientific Incubator, uh, model number 3158. It's a fairly old incubator, an extremely easy incubator to troubleshoot and repair. First things, all incubators have one thing in common, they all have chambers. Those chambers can be heated in two ways. They could be air or a water jacket. The advantage to the air is the fact that it is quick, uh, it's quick to res get to the set point, as an example, 37 degrees. Um, whereas a water uh, jacket incubator would take 24 hours to get to that temperature. In fact, that would be my recommendation, that if you're setting this up, is, is, is to put the water in it and let it go for 24 hours. The chamber is usually has a, an outer door and an inner door. Most chambers that I've seen are all stainless steel. Inside the chamber of this particular unit, you can see a fan, which maintains the CO2 in the chamber um, to the to the same level throughout it, and a CO2 detector. There's generally two types of detector. One is thermal and one is infrared. The thermal is what you're viewing here. If it was an inter infrared, you would see two LEDs. And by the way, that's an indicator that, that the, it basically the CO2 sensor is working for the infrared. The outer door on this particular unit, and most of them, is heated. That's what the power line down here is for. It takes 120 volts, and it, it, it's one, one long heater throughout the door. Underneath here, you're also going to see a heating pad. That heating pad is how this instrument controls humidity. It doesn't have much of a control for humidity. It's simply you put a pan of water in the bottom, and you'll get 90% most of the time. So it gives you limited control. Some incubators have actually controls to, so that you can put a set point for humidity. On top, left to right, you've got the power on off switch. You've got a circuit breaker. You have a control here. This particular switch keeps it at 37 uh, at all times. It's just that is a common thing, this, uh, common set point for most people. But if you have something special, you can throw it in the, uh, into the bottom position and then you use this knob to uh, do your set point, as example, 40 or whatever. Right here, this is simply an adjustment for you. So just a screwdriver, a little teeny screwdriver. This allows you to do some uh, calibration and, set, and uh, set your set points. Right here, you have a sample port that goes directly into the chamber so that you can use a right um, to see what type of uh, CO2, what's the percentage of CO2 in your incubator. This is the CO2 control. You have a, a alarm, that's if your CO2 gets too high. Um, you have an inject LED that tells when that's lit, that tells you that the instrument is calling for CO2. You have an on-off switch. You have a set or silence. By pushing it, you can silence an alarm. By pushing and holding it, you can change the set point of your CO2. Through that, we're using that screwdriver. You got a uh, little pot here that you can change and set your CO2 set point, and also you have a spot here to zero it. And of course, you have your display. Moving on to the right, we have a monitor and alarm. Um, uh, this is the first LED is for over temp, a set point over temp set point of 38. When it goes over, thir if the incubator goes over 38, it will alarm. Below that, you have an LED that says add water. And if you run low of water, that light will light. And it's simply telling you to add water. And this is common to um, most incubators that are water jacket. Then you have a set point right here that you're going to push this. And you are going to uh, adjust, using the screwdriver, adjust your over temp value. Let's take a look at the electronics. Here is your monitor for your alarm. Please note that this simply pulls out. Um, you push a button, 
in the front of the instrument, and that whole module will come out just like the whole drawer comes out. That just saves you from doing it, getting into it from the from having to take the top off. And again, these pop off also and slide right out. Okay, on to the CO2 module. Again, you can see how this pulls right out, and I will point out that you've got a little pot over here that you can use to change your set point, or not your set point, but to change your uh, gain of the instrument. Um, that's a calibration, not a set point. Moving over to the tubing that goes to your, uh, to your sample port. This, this tubing goes right into the chamber. Then you've got your temperature module. Temperature module has a, a power coming into it and then it has your thermistor and this cable also controls goes to a triac which is what controls the heater. I will mention that if, if you find out that this is all burnt up you change these as an assembly. Then you've got your circuit breaker and your on off switch. You also have your tra a transformer and a relay. This is the incoming line coming from your CO2 tank. It goes to an inject solenoid. This is very common. Almost all incubators have an inject solenoid, and this is what controls the CO2 going out to the chamber. Also, this has a controls on here, and it's pretty much an AC fan. That fan has to run all the time. Um, it, it is what control, uh, circulates the CO2 inside the um, chamber, and that's very common to most incubators. They all have some way of circulating that air. Uh, many of them have fans inside, uh, where, uh, uh, as an example like this one. Oh, and let's not forget to mention the fuse. The fuse goes for, there for to protect, protect from um, high voltage spikes. And, of course, if you see no displays at all, that's, that's where your problem more likely is. Thank you much for the, attending this session of uh, introduction to the incubator from Biomed Buddy.